I think it's colors on the ground because I was trying to this is amazing. I wasn't interviewed all that time. And then I told the story specifically. And I told the story specifically. And I told the story specifically. And I I will let all that go. It's like first no, 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 no. And then you get to the middle. Where they are. Yeah, yeah. So weird. Yeah. Now, is that it with Johnson? Yeah. Well, I could, but good. Oh, my are you taking cards? Yeah. So everyone on the deck, on the checking desk, are like cards and then writing utensils. So grab a card. Yes. Yes. So I have a set. like my student, like little one, so perfectly set. hundred percent. Those of you at home today, I'm having everyone that comes in grab just like a card and then something to write with. So if you were going to do some intention settings since today is solstice. So if you have, um, if you want to grab a card and something to write with or a journal, um, I would recommend that. I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. Can someone give me just a thumbs up? Yeah. Okay, great. for Deb. How is everyone? <laughs> yeah. So it's winter solstice today. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a practice dedicated to solstice. So of course, it's the longest night of the year. So it's the most dark right now. So solstice um, is really a holy sacred time. 
And solstice, I think, is truly about transformation. So as we're going into the season of winter, winter is the season of transformation because it is so dark. And that's when we go into or we have the opportunity to go into our own dark and to work with it, to transform it, to look at it, to be conscious with it. Um, and a little known fact is that all growth happens in the dark. So when children grow, they grow while they're sleeping. They grow in the dark. So all of our growth, we have an opportunity for so much growth in these next couple months. And we've already been living in the dark because of course it's not an instantaneous thing. These last weeks and months have since fall equinox have been getting darker and darker and darker. But we're sort of at this portal point now because now we're moving towards more light. So at fall equinox, we were moving towards more dark. And now that we are going through this portal of winter solstice, now every day's going to have a little more light. So it seems to me the second half of this dark time, there's more inherent hope, right? There's a little more hope like, okay, the light is coming back. So Today is going to be a it's going to be a slow practice, and it's going to be a practice really focused on how do I want to transform. So I think the danger or the challenge of this time of year is it's super easy to go unconscious. It's super easy this time of year to start to slumber yourself and to sort of shut off, numb out, drink more, um, buy more sleep more. And we really want to hone this time. This is like a time of opportunity for us to transform, but it means we have to stay awake and wade through the darkness instead of just hibernate for the next three months and then wake up when spring comes. So we have an opportunity for transformation. So today uh, we're going to move slowly. And the reason I have given you a card is we'll work at the end with, you know, receiving the intention we want for this next season, the season of winter. What do we want to transform? What do we want to let go of? What do we want to bring in? So we're not going to write this card out right now because at the start of a practice, we're always a little cloudy, right? We're carrying in with us the last couple of days. Everyone's nodding, yeah. So we're gonna get really clear in the practice and move into more silent spaces so that by the end, instead of your mind creating your intention, your body, your soul, your inner knowing sort of presents that intention to you in a different way than the, the forcefulness of, well, I think this is what I need. Sometimes what we need is what we would never imagine, right? But it will come through if we create the space in our bodies and in our minds. All right, so choose a mudra, maybe thumb, pointer, finger, lightly touch, or right palm in the lap, left palm on top, thumb slightly touch. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, start to make that transformative journey inward. One of the components we'll be relying on today in this practice is something I call calm abiding. We might also call it equanimity, non-judgment, being the witness. It's just a willingness to stay present with whatever presents itself to you today in this practice. And we'll use this practice today at the start of this new season, a new season of some more hope. We'll use the practice to release some of the mental chatter, some of the busyness in our minds, the stress in our bodies. This 
settling into just a little more trust. So staying with the breath, continue to slow the exhale down. Continue to watch the magic of the exhale. Every exhale you make is a releasing, it's a letting go. It's aiding you in this transformation. So bringing hands together in front of the heart, palms come together. If you already feel an intention just bubbling up for the practice, take a moment to repeat it to yourself. And as we chant this morning, chanting also aids in transformation. It's very much an energetic clearing tool. So a reminder that OM has three syllables. Ah, ooh, mm. As you chant ah, feel it deep in the pelvis. As you chant ooh, move that sound and vibration up into the heart. And as you chant mmm, have that vibration reverberate in the headspace. And then the fourth syllable of OM is the silence afterwards. So let's take a deep breath in, follow that breath out. Inhale to chant. Uh, Nice deep breath in. Exhale, bow towards hands and heart. And then release the hands, lift the head, open the eyes. Come on to your back. So we'll start on our backs this morning. You can just place your cards and any props off to the side. And why don't you just start in a little Shavasana here. So extend the legs long, arms at the side of the body. And just begin to see if you can feel the body, feel where sensation is prevalent. Notice if the body feels tired this morning or heavy, just take a moment to really consciously tune in. So that's again, what we're needing to guard against in this season is the sort of numbing out, the, the going to sleep that can happen in this season. Whereas this is a prime time for us to stay really tuned in because this is the season of transformation. It's really the season of inner transformation. So rely on that breath and start to deepen the breath. Use this exhale to settle or sink into your mat just a little more. And then from here, when you're ready, let your knees gently come in towards your chest and wrap your arms around your legs and just rock a little side to side. And 
From here, extend legs straight up into the sky. And flex point the feet, maybe shake the legs out a little bit. As you inhale, stretch the legs even taller, longer towards the sky. And as you exhale, bend the knees and slowly return the feet to the floor. Go wide with your feet so the feet touch the edges of the mat. We'll, we'll start to really connect breath with movement. So inhaling into that navel center. And as you exhale, drop legs to the right, windshield wiper. And then on an inhale, you'll come back up through center. So just connecting breath with movement, exhale to the left. So go at your pace and be very conscious. So remember that even in your yoga practice, you can be sort of asleep. You can sort of just be going through the motions, tuning out a little bit. And we're practicing like how much can you tune in today? How much can your whole movement be in alignment with the cycle of your breath? Eventually, when your legs drop down to the right, stay with your legs down to the right, and then extend that uh, left arm way up above behind you. Feel the left hip tuck under just a little bit as you imagine your left femur getting longer. And then feel that beautiful stretch up your left side. And then from here, you'll on an inhale, slowly bring the knees back to center. On an exhale, legs drop down to the left and we'll stay legs to the left. The right arm now floats up overhead behind you. Imagining that right femur growing longer, right hip slightly drawing under a bit more. And then on this next inhale, breathe it into the right lung. Feel that whole right side body expand a bit more. And then on an inhale, legs come back to center. Allow the soles of the feet to touch. Now knees open out to the side, Supta Baddha Konasana. We'll actually be moving in and out of this a couple of times. So it's like we're gonna be flapping the wings of the butterfly with our breath. So on an inhale, let your knees come back together. Feet will come flat on the floor. And then on an exhale, knees again, open out to the side. Soles of the feet are back together. Find your pace, inhale. Wings come back together, knees touch, feet on the floor. Exhale, there's that gradual opening, feet touching, knees out to the sides. This often can release and unlock a lot of sensation, tension that's being held in the pelvis. So again, see if you can stay tuned in, that calm abiding. It's like, I'm gonna be present for my sensations today. I'll be present for my emotions. And then eventually the next time that your knees move laterally out to the sides and the feet are together, then stay in Supta Baddha. Once again, feeling the drawing under of the pelvis and that really beautiful lifting of the heart. You get a really expansive heart space. Calm abiding with yourself. Teaches us how to tolerate and be with what is instead of push things away or numb ourselves out. 
and it's a practice we get more practiced at doing this, the more we're willing to stay with what is. All right, from here on an inhale, knees come back together and then separate the feet just slightly hip distance with the part. Hands resting on the abdomen. Tune into those nice deep belly breaths. And on an inhale, bring the knees in towards the chest and stretch the arms up overhead behind you. As you exhale, legs straight into the sky, arms to the floor. Inhale, bend the knees, feet to the floor, arms stretch up overhead. And now as you exhale, lift the pelvis, arms come to the floor, bridge. Stay here and bridge as you inhale and let your whole pelvis lift and expand. And then go so slow on the release. You might even feel some shaking in the body as you really take your time returning the hips to the floor. And that feeling of groundedness as soon as the sacrum reaches the earth, notice that. Repeating that again, knees come in to the chest, arms stretch up overhead. Now as you exhale, the legs straighten as the arms can gently float to the earth. Inhale, knees bend, feet to the floor as your arms stretch up. Nice opening in the chest, the torso. And now exhale, lift the pelvis. Float the arms to the floor and stay here in bridge pose. Use your inhale to get a little more elevated, a little more buoyant here. And then slow down your exhale as you slow down your release coming down to the earth. Roll over onto your right side and pause in the fetal position. So take a moment just to rest here in this pose of safety. This is also a pose that really draws us inward. This is what the season is about, bringing our awareness, our calm, abiding inward. And you show up for yourself in a different way in these months than you do in the summer when there's an expansiveness of energy and we're more out in the world. And from here, eventually roll off onto or roll up to all fours. And then close your eyes and just let your body move. Movements might be really slow and subtle today, or maybe they'll be a little quicker or faster. This is that sort of surrendering to your body and seeing what it needs to do this morning. The yogis would say that the biggest stumbling block or the biggest obstacle to our awakening, to becoming more conscious, is our unconsciousness, right?
the speeding through life or the floating through life versus being really awake to all the signs and the magic around you. Begin to emerge into some cat-cow as you inhale, the pelvis tilts and the heart lifts. On the exhale, you round, tuck the chin, tuck the pelvis. Keep going here. We'll expand the cat cow practice. So start with me here as you inhale, pelvis tilts, heart lifts. As you exhale and round, now start to sink hips towards heels as you come to child's pose. And we don't stay very long, it's just the breath. On the next inhale, that inhale pulls you up and back through cow pose. On an exhale, as you round this time, toes curl under, down dog. Walk your dog out a bit. Take a breath in. Exhale, slowly lower your knees down to the floor. See if your knees can come down at the exact same moment. It's actually kind of challenging. Once you arrive on all fours, just sway the hips from side to side several times. Same sequence, inhale, pelvis tilts, heart lifts. Exhale, we round as the hips slowly move back towards the heels, child's pose. On an inhale, pull your heart forward through your arms, lifted gaze. As you exhale, round, down dog. From this down dog, hands walk back towards the feet. Round through the feet, let the head and neck go. So really shake out that head and neck. Yeah. Bless those lips. Let your jaw, your mouth open, move it side to side. And we come up with a lot of consciousness. We could all just whip up really quickly, but we're gonna do it differently today. So bend the knees, let the hips sink, feel the navel draw up, tuck the chin, and then slowly start to come up. So it's a really slow ascent. Those arms, like your phoenix rising wings, start to release out to the side. Gaze can even lift. Eventually, palms touch above the head. And we pull down that energy. Thumbs stop at the third eye, space between the eyebrows, at the mouth, your voice, at the throat and down to the heart. Release those hands, open the eyes, slowly come forward. Looking down at your beautiful feet, making sure that they're hip distance with the part, toes are spread and that you're anchored through the four corners, big toe mound, inner heel, little toe mound, outer heel. Stand at your full height, shoulders rolled back. Gaze is soft or eyes are closed. And that 
that slow unfolding of your wings as you inhale, arms stretch out to the sides, all the way up overhead. Now, as you exhale, pull those hands down the midline of the body as you fold forward. And on an inhale, step the left foot back, deep lunge. Lower the back knee down. Walk your right foot off to the right. Turn the toes out of the right foot just a little bit and then you can come into humble pose, forearms, you can stay upright. Just getting into that hip region, which forever is a sticking point for most of us. I think the healing and awakening process never ends. It's just sort of a constant one layer after one layer after one layer. So don't be just dis, 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 uh, stressed if you get into your hips and like, it's tight again. I think that's the process. What I encourage you is to stay with the sensation. I was, you know, you're sort of like a sensation seeker as a yogi. You're going for where do I have sensation and can I actually really go there? Go to my edge. Breathe into it. And from here, you can walk, come back upright, walk your foot back towards the center of the mat and then we'll straighten this front leg. So it helps if your back knee slides back just a little bit. The hamstrings are real tight. You'll have bend in that front knee, which is okay. Otherwise, anchor your right heel down and drag it back. So really actively pull this heel back. And then get the spine to grow longer. Your heart lifts a little bit here. I like to add a twist here. So you could also play with that. Hands walk to the right, the outside of that straight front leg. Calm abiding with your sensation and with yourself. Whatever mental chatter is happening. Eventually bend into the right knee and return to a deep lunge. Left hand grounds into the floor or maybe into a block. Right hand to the waist to add just a little twist here. Right shoulder pulls back, right arm might float into the sky or a right arm might drop in alignment with your right ear. So you get a bit more of a side body opening. And as you stay with the breath, breathe into the navel center and on the exhale, see if you can get that navel to twist up to the right just a little more. You might feel your left shoulder move towards your right knee. Yeah, that's it. Take a breath in and on the exhale, release back to center. And then step back into down dog. And really feel your down dog. And then move your down dog in such a way that allows you to release and open. So transformation, I mean, this truly is like, it's the, it's the death and rebirth cycle. So this is the time of year we have to let things die off. We have to release and let go. We have to shed. On an inhale, left foot steps between the hands, deep lunge. Back knee to the earth. Left foot turns out. You can move the left foot off to the side a bit more. Coming down onto forearms or staying upright if that's better for you. But let the pelvis move. Again, go where you have the most sensation. 
So only you know where that point is. I mean, you could come to yoga class and never go to the edge. No one would know. But it's sort of like, okay, I'm going to really go to where I have some intensity and see if I can be there with some calm abiding. From here, eventually move into the hamstring stretch. So you'll come back upright, straighten the left leg. Back knee will inch back a couple inches. Really see if you can get some rocking sensation here, right? Like rock the pelvis forward and back. Root that left heel and keep pulling it back. And of course, you can add some twisting action if that is interesting to your body. Eventually coming out of the pose back to a deep lunge. Right hand grounds into the floor, into a block, left hand to the waist as we start to twist. Think about your back leg for a moment. Make sure it stays really elevated instead of sort of dropping towards the floor. Make sure it's got some buoyancy. And that left shoulder pulls actively back. Top arm can lift. And you might even drop that top arm in alignment with the ear. Now actively breathe into the navel center. On the exhale, can you feel it twist up to the left a little more? Yeah, you can even take your hand there. Pull that left side up or pull the side up to the left. Let's breathe in and then exhale, release, hands to the floor. Step back to down dog. And once again, when you come to down dog, it's a pose we're in all the time. But can you be here really consciously with this pose today? What do you notice in your body in this down dog? And can you actually really press your hands down to get your spine to grow longer? Those thigh bones moving back towards the back wall, your sit bones lifting towards the sky. And then from down dog, Bend the knees and slowly lower again, trying to let both knees come to that mat at the exact same moment. Then take the knees wide, big toes touch, and sink back into child's pose. Find your breath here. Slow down the exhale. And imagine that with every exhale, it's as if you're blowing out a dark cloud of fear, of mistrust, blowing out guilt. Blowing out stuckness. Blowing out self-doubt. purifying the body. On your next inhale, use the inhale to pull back up through all fours. You can inhale, pelvis tilts, heart lifts. And on the exhale, round back to down dog. Hands walking back towards your feet. A 
coming up really slowly, bending the knees first, rolling up, taking your time. Feeling your wings start to spread as your arms stretch out to the sides. Eventually those palms coming together. Hands coming down through the midline, stopping at your third eye. Intuition, stopping at your mouth, right speech. Stopping at your throat, speaking truth. Stopping at your heart, compassion. Okay, releasing the hands, coming forward once again. Staying in that inner space that you're cultivating. So eyes might remain closed. Inhale again, it's a slow expansion of your arms out to the sides. Palms will touch and then we fold slowly. Take your time as you descend. This time on an inhale, extend the heart forward. So lift up halfway. On the exhale, let out a nice sigh as you fold. And then step the left foot back into deep lunge. Turn your back foot down. Rise up. Start in Vira Vajrasana to Warrior Two. Arms can turn towards the sky to open the heart. And then the gaze gets very steadfast over that front middle finger. Your right knee is tracking over to the right, so open it to the right just a little more. Breathe in, and then exhale, commit to staying with that calm abiding. It's like, I will stay here with all this sensation. Breathing in again. This time we move into side angle, so right forearm to the right thigh, left arm floats up in alignment with the ear. That pinky finger of the left hand is slightly rotated down towards the floor. Anchor into your back foot. Feel your back leg get really firm. Now as you breathe, lengthen through both side bodies, especially that right side. As you exhale, feel your navel twist up to the left. Really good, everyone. Now staying here with me, inhale. As you exhale, take your left hand down to your waist and straighten your front leg, right hand to your shin. So we're moving into trikonasana. You might need to shorten your stance a little bit. Sometimes triangle has a slightly shorter stance. Front leg is straight. Right hand is pressing into the shin as your shin presses into your hand. Your hand could also be on your ankle. Again, lengthen through both side bodies. Draw that top shoulder back. Really good, top arm lifts. Gaze is straight ahead or gaze is up towards your top hand. Feel your navel engage in towards the spine, which is gonna root your pelvis a little more. Breathe in. Now, as you exhale again, stay with me. Left hand comes down to your left waistline. Look down at your right foot. Bend into your right knee, pivot your back heel towards the ceiling. If you have a block, you might place it underneath your right hand. When we lift off, Ardha Chandrasana, top leg lifts, strong leg. Left hand can stay on your waist or it can lift. Take a breath in, calm abiding even here. And then as we exhale, we'll slowly drop left foot next to the right. So you're in a forward fold. Shake out your head a little bit. Let your whole system realign. Let yourself feel. Yeah, maybe a nice sigh would feel good. And then step back into down dog.
Instead of zoning out, in down dog, zone in. What's going on in your body, in your mind? Stay with it. On an inhale, float forward to plank. And on an exhale, back to dog. Do that two more times. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, back. As you inhale forward on your third round, then slowly lower all the way down onto your belly. And take a cobra or an up dog. You decide, feet are planted, chest lifts, shoulders back. As you exhale, lower all the way down and then transition back through down dog. On an inhale, step the left foot between the hands, deep lunge. Back foot turns down and we rise up to warrior two. Palms turn towards the sky. Gaze settles out over that middle finger. See if you can really feel your strength here. This is a, quite an empowering pose. So your legs are strong, your legs are holding you. Torso's lifted, even the heart lifts just a little more and your gaze is so steadfast. There's a lot of calm abiding here. You're the peaceful warrior, right? You're strong and steadfast and yet there's a peaceful calm abiding here. As you inhale, feel a little more length come up your spine and keep that length as you exhale, left forearm to the left thigh, right arm up. So now the focus is in that back leg. It's anchored down, firm that back leg even more than you thought possible. Lengthen, especially through your left side body. And then twist, navel twisting up towards the sky. Breathe in. On the exhale, right hand to your waist. Straightening your left leg. You might need to inch your feet in just a bit. Trikonasana, triangle pose. So left hand is on the shin or on the ankle. Both legs are straight. Kneecaps are lifting, so those legs are so engaged. So once you've got the base set, then you can lengthen through the spine more, really pull this right shoulder back, top arm can lift. Triangle pose. There's a little twist here. So as you exhale, feel your navel twisting up to the right. Breathe in, exhale, right hand to right waist, bend into your left knee. Left hand comes to the floor. So your back heel will pivot towards the sky. Back foot steps forward one step, left hand on a block or the floor as you extend your right leg up. So right leg is strong, toes are spread on that right side. Hand can be on the waist, you can extend that top arm up into the sky. And even here, can you get that little twist of your navel up towards the ceiling? Calm abiding, even here. Yeah, good job, breathe in. And now lower your right foot next to your left foot. Nice job, everyone. Forward fold. We haven't done Ardha Chandrasana in a while. Shake out the head. We're almost to a half moon, so it's a good pose for right now. Let your jawline soften a little bit here. You can even hold on to your elbows if you'd like and hang here a bit. And then come up slowly, bend the knees, start to roll up. And those wings move out, big expansion, really let, let the heart lift. The 
stay here and balance. So some people like to be off their mats on the floor, if that's better for you. Moving into Rikshasana, which is tree pose. We wanna draw in first, which is really what winter's about, drawing in. And then at the end, we'll see if you desire to expand out, you don't have to. Start with hands in front of the heart and just really establish this steadfast mountain pose, the base for every standing pose. Feel that stability, feel your roots moving down toward the center of the earth. And now stay really curious as you bring a little more weight into your right foot. Now lifting the left foot up to ankle towards the calf, above the knee towards the upper thigh. And we'll stay with hands pulled in towards the heart, the palms in front of the heart. As you get steady here, root your tailbone down and let your navel slightly pull in and up. So with all poses, we're attempting to hug in towards the midline of the body. That's what will give you balance. Now, because the light is slowly coming back, if you're gonna expand your arms, I want you to do it really slow, right? So go really slow. It's like the light is starting to emerge. That heart lifting. Breathe in, calm abiding, even here, even if you're having challenges. And we'll slowly release. And shake out this right side. Feel free to use walls too, if that helps you. Or poles or whatever you have nearby. All right, let's start back in mountain pose. So before we even move into Vrikshasana on the other side, again, embody the mountain. There's firmness and stability. And also begin to work already energetically with this idea of pulling in towards the midlines. As if you have a, a midline of the body, a central channel of the body, we're pulling in towards that central channel. You can visualize it. Now the weight starts to transfer into the left foot receptive side of the body, right foot comes to the ankle or towards the calf, perhaps above the knee joint. Get your tailbone to anchor down and your navel to slightly pull in and up. And then again, let the light emerge slowly. So extend the arms out. Keep the gaze on the floor for more groundedness. Good, everyone, let's breathe in. And then exhale, slowly draw hands together. Back down to the heart. And release that foot. Right, coming to the front of the mat, go wide with the feet, turn the toes out and sink down through Malasana squat pose. Hands in front of the heart, really settle into that pelvis. One more of those really nice deep Slow exhales. And then from here, we'll sit all the way back. Extend legs forward. And come down slowly. So arms up, palms turn towards the sky. Nice slow, slow descent.
And once you reach the floor, let your knees bend. Bring your knees in towards your chest and just rock a little side to side. And a nice final stretch for the hips. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. Left ankle over right knee. Draw knees in towards chest. Holding on to the back of the right hamstring. And again, just rock side to side a little here. And stay tuned in. So this is the part of the practice when we started to clear some of the muck out of the way. So we're much closer to our intuition, our essence, our high self. So this is the time to really hone in and be present. And then you can switch legs. So release both feet to the floor. Left ankle crosses over the right knee. Knees pull in towards chest, maybe holding on to the back of the hamstring. creating some sweet space in the body. We must create the space, which is why the shedding is so important. We must create the space for something new to come forth. So releasing this side, moving into a little yoga nidra now. So I'm gonna encourage you, um, to maybe take a little extra time right now to set yourself up well. Feel free to grab extra blankets. Ideally, you'll have a blanket under your head or a pillow. Maybe have a blanket covering you. Maybe have on extra clothing. If you've got a long sleeve nearby or you could grab one of those white towels that we clean with the mats with and even put that over your eyes. So let's talk briefly about yoga nidra. Yoga nidra is called yogic sleep, but it's not really going to sleep. That's what, uh, again, this season will guide us towards. And our work is to try to stay awake. So yoga nidra is a very relaxed body with a lot of conscious awareness. So the body goes very restful. The body goes to sleep, but the mind and the consciousness stays awake. So we'll use this nidra today to, again, help us shed, but begin to help us pull forth the intention that we want for this next season, this next season of winter. So just feeling yourself begin to settle in, you can wiggle around as much as you need. And then notice how the body can eventually find a, a place of stillness. Feeling the heels of your feet on the floor, feeling your buttocks on the floor, feeling your shoulders on the floor, feeling your arms on the floor. And feeling the back of the head really release and settle into the floor.
going to move systematically through the body very briefly. Starting at your left waistline, feel your left waistline. Moving up to your left armpit. Feeling your left shoulder blade on the floor. Your left elbow. Your left hand, back of the hand. Feel the palm of the left hand. Tune into the tip of the left thumb. Tip of the left pointer finger. Tip of the middle finger, ring finger, and tip of the left pinky finger. Awareness moving back up through the left wrist, the left elbow, the left shoulder. Awareness in the center of the heart. Awareness moving down to the navel center. Awareness now at your right waistline. Awareness moving up to your right armpit. Your right shoulder on the floor. Awareness moving down through your right elbow your right wrist, feeling the back of the right hand, feeling the palm of the right hand. Awareness in the tip of the right thumb, tip of the right pointer finger, tip of the right middle finger, Ring finger, pinky finger. Feel your entire right hand, right wrist, right elbow, right shoulder. Awareness moving into the center of the heart space. Awareness moving down to the navel center. Awareness moving down to the pubic bone. Feeling the left leg relaxed, heavy. Feeling the entire right leg relaxed and heavy. Awareness back in the pubic bone. Awareness moving up to the navel center. Palm abiding. Being the witness as your awareness moves up to your heart center. Awareness moving into the center of the throat. Awareness at the space between your eyebrows, third eye point. And now awareness floating right at the crown of the head. Just feeling your whole body heavy. The limbs are heavy, the torso is heavy, the head is heavy. 
like there are weights in the body just grounding you to the floor, like you've got a weighted blanket on top of you. And then notice what emerges is that as the body feels heavy and weighted, you also start to see this emerging lightness come into the body. So it's this beautiful space of feeling both heavy and grounded and stable at the same time that you simultaneously also feel light and expansive and free. And it's from this very powerful place of being both grounded and steadfast and safe as well as expansive and free and light that you begin to connect with your inner wisdom, your higher knowing. from that space beginning to receive your intention or what you need most from this winter season. What are you ready to shed? What are you ready to bring forth? What are you ready to transform?
Take a deeper breath. Let your body move just a little bit. Move slowly. As you transition your way eventually back up to your seat. And we will all come back up with our hands in front of our heart. So we are on the cusp of the unknown. None of us know what this next season of life, this next season of winter will bring. Such beautiful words of trust. Can we trust ourselves? And as we pause here at the end of this darkest day of the year, just again, opening to receive, what do I need in these next three months? What do I need to shed? What do I want to bring forth? What do I want to transform? So bowing towards yourself and just the sacredness of this practice and how you keep showing up for it. Namaste. And so I invite you to now, before you leave, if you have the time to jot down any insights or any intentions that came your way during the practice or what you'd like your intention for this next season. 
or maybe no words came through, but an image or a picture came through. You might draw, it might just be one word. But make sure you date it 12, 21, 21. Happy solstice.